In today's video, I'll answer your question, what does the Bible say about rape? Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. The Bible addresses the issue of rape directly, and as one would expect, the Bible depicts rape as a gross violation of God's design. The Bible condemns rape wherever it is mentioned. Rape factors into several biblical stories. Jacob's daughter Dinah was abducted and raped by Shechem in Genesis chapter 34 verses 1 through 31. In a horrifying atrocity, the men of Gibeah savagely gang raped and murdered a Levite's concubine in Judges chapter 19 verses 11 through 30. The men of Sodom attempted to rape two visitors in their city in Genesis chapter 19 verses 4 through 9. David's son Amnon raped his half-sister Tamar in 2 Samuel chapter 13 verses 1 through 39. In every case, the aftermath of these crimes was tragic and devastating. As the people of Israel prepared to enter the promised land under Joshua's leadership, the laws of God were repeated. One of those laws was a clear prohibition against forcing a woman into a sexual encounter against her will, or what we today call rape. This command was meant to protect women and to protect the nation of Israel from committing sinful actions. The laws of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 13 through 29 are related in that they deal with offenses involving women. Verses 13 through 22 deal with crimes involving a married woman, and verses 23 through 29 deal with crimes involving an unmarried woman. In that latter section, verses 25 through 27 clearly addresses the crime of rape. If out in the country a man happens to find a young woman pledged to be married and rapes her, only the man who has done this shall die. Do nothing to the woman. She has committed no sin deserving death. This case is like that of someone who attacks and murders a neighbor. For the man found the young woman out in the country, and though the betrothed woman screamed, there was no one to rescue her. The law specified that in a sexual assault, the woman was responsible to actively resist the rapist and scream for help. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 24. If she failed to resist when she could have done so, the law viewed the act as consensual sex, not rape, and both parties were guilty. If the assault took place in an isolated area, the law gave the woman the benefit of the doubt and assumed she had resisted her attacker, but there was no one to help her. In that case, she was not held culpable. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 27. The law stipulated that a rapist was to be killed by stoning. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25. In the same context is a passage that causes some controversy. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 28 and 29 says, If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, and they are discovered, he shall pay her father fifty shekels of silver. He must marry the young woman, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. Some versions of the Bible, such as the NIV, the GW, the GNT, and the NET, translate the Hebrew verb in question as rapes. However, the NLT simply says that the man has intercourse with the woman. We believe the NLT comes the closest to the law's original intent for these reasons. First, the verses immediately preceding Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 28 through 29 are the ones that deal with rape in verses 25 through 27. The law has already prescribed the death penalty for that crime. Why would verses 28 and 29 address rape again and in doing so change the penalty? Obviously, different crimes are in view. Second, Exodus chapter 22 verse 16 is a parallel law. If a man seduces a virgin who is not pledged to be married and sleeps with her, he must pay the bride price, and she shall be his wife. No force is involved, only seduction. It's a case of consensual sex and requires the same penalty as prescribed in Deuteronomy chapter 22. The man pays a fine and marries the girl he slept with. Third, in the wording of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 28, the penalty is enforced if they are discovered. The fact that both of them are discovered indicates the consensual nature of the sexual act. The condition that they, plural, are found out makes no sense in the case of rape. Thus, this law covers a consensual tryst, 
a man who seduces a young woman, sleeps with her, and then expects to avoid all responsibility is thwarted in this plan. God instructs the couple to get married and stay married. And fourth, there are two distinct Hebrew words used in the same passage. In Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25, the word in question is translated rapes, but in verse 28 is a completely different verb, translated seizes in the ESV and has intercourse with in the NLT. The different verbs suggest different behaviors. Critics of the Bible also point to Numbers chapter 31, in which Moses tells his fighting men that the young girls who are virgins may live. You may keep them for yourselves. Numbers chapter 31 verse 18. Critics wrongly assume that the captive women were to be raped. Rape is never mentioned in the passage. The soldiers were commanded to purify themselves and their captives. Verse 19. Rape would have violated this command. See Leviticus chapter 15 verses 16 through 18. The women who were taken captive were never referred to as sexual objects. Did the captive women eventually marry some Israelites? Yes, probably. Is there any indication that rape or sex slavery was forced upon the women? Absolutely not. In the New Testament, rape is not mentioned directly, but within the Jewish culture of the day, rape would have been considered sexual immorality. Jesus and the apostles spoke against sexual immorality and Jesus suggested immorality is justifiable grounds for divorce in Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. Further, the New Testament is clear that Christians are to obey the laws of their governing authorities, Romans chapter 13. Not only is rape morally wrong, it is also wrong according to the laws of the land. As such, anyone who would commit this crime should expect to pay the consequences, including arrest and imprisonment. To the victims of rape, we must offer much care and compassion. God's word often speaks about helping those in need and in vulnerable situations. Christians should model the love and compassion of Christ by assisting victims of rape in any way possible. People are responsible for the sins they commit, including rape. However, no one is beyond the grace of God. Even those who have committed the vilest of sins can know God's forgiveness if they repent and turn from their evil ways. Divine forgiveness does not remove the need for punishment according to earthly laws, but it can offer hope and the way to a new life. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There you'll find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.